When you are first starting out on guitar as a beginner, one of the most important things you learn besides chords is strumming. There are so many different strumming patterns, so many tricks and techniques that you can use to improve your strumming. It requires a lot of rhythm and a lot of practice when you're first starting out. But when you get to the point where it becomes muscle memory and you can just strum unconsciously without even thinking about what you were doing, it could be the difference between you being discouraged and putting down the guitar and you sticking with it until you can master it. So if you're interested in learning all the basics of strumming and the tricks and tips that helped me along the way, keep watching. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Nina. If you're new here, welcome, I'm so happy to have you, and if you're not new, how's it going? Welcome to Strumming 101. A ton of you have been asking for this video for quite a long time because during my tutorials, I talk a lot about different strumming techniques, and so I just wanted to make one video dedicated to telling you guys all about the different strumming patterns and strumming techniques and what you can do to level up your strumming. Now, in my head, I think of guitar players and kind of like two categories. There are people who are really good at finger style and lead guitar and riffs. And then we have our rhythm players, which are chords, strumming patterns, different techniques such as picking, palm muting, hammer-ons and pull-offs. And for me, I've always seen myself more as a rhythm player because I really like more performing rather than just playing guitar by itself. And it's easier to sing and do rhythm strumming at the same time. I used to think I would have to learn really difficult riffs in order to be respected as a guitar player in the guitar world, but that's not true. You can be just as impressive on guitar with strumming as somebody can with doing lead guitar work on the neck and everything, so yeah. Now strumming can be difficult when you're starting out because you're also learning chords as well as trying to remember the strumming pattern. It can be really frustrating because you aren't able to do your left and right hand coordination at the same time. But for me, when I used to teach guitar lessons, I would have my students work on the chords, master the chords, and then work on the strumming because sometimes with the strumming, you're getting in your head, you're like down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, and it's just like literally crazy. So the topics we're going over today are basic strumming patterns. I'll just demo a couple of them, show you like my top three. Then we're going to talk about down strumming because this is something that took me a while to get as well. Along with that we're going to do palm muting which you guys have been asking forever for me to do a tutorial about palm muting so we'll get into that. We're going to talk about picking, mixing, picking and strumming together for more intermediate players. We're going to talk about hammer-ons and pull-offs and how you can incorporate that into your strumming. Okay, let's get into it. So I'm gonna go over some basic strumming patterns here. There are so many strumming patterns, so these are just a couple of them. But essentially, songs have different time frames of chords, and without getting into to like music theory and everything, which I don't know a ton about, you basically have measures. And sometimes when I'm teaching, I say, oh, you stay on this chord for a measure. Oh, you're gonna split the measure between these two chords. Usually when you have a full strumming pattern, that is a full measure. And if two chords split the measure, you're gonna split the strumming pattern between the two chords. I'm just gonna do a basic chord progression here. We're gonna do C, G, A minor, and F, and I'm gonna show you guys the difference between those two things. So the first strumming pattern I'm gonna show you guys is a full measure for each chord, and the strumming pattern is going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And now that is a full strumming pattern, a full measure of this chord, and then you would just repeat that for each of your four chords. So if we go to G, it's gonna be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, and then you would repeat that with the last two chords. If you are splitting the measure, if the timing of the song is half a measure per chord, then it's going to be like this. Down, up, down, up, and then you would switch to G, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. So it's not split evenly. That is important to note. And then for the second two chords, you're gonna do the same thing in your A minor, and it's gonna be down, up, down, up, and then switch to F for the last part. Down, 
up, down, up, down, down, up. So those are kind of like the two basic ways to do that strumming pattern, once with a full measure of each chord and once with like a half measure of each chord. Now I'm going to play both ways a little bit faster just so you can see. So I'm gonna play the full measure way first. And now I'm going to show you guys the half measure way where the chords are split in this drumming pattern. So you can see how the second way is a little tougher because you have less time to switch between chords. So if you're a beginner, I would look for songs that have a full measure strumming pattern for each chord so that you have more time to switch chords and you don't have to think about switching chords while strumming, keeping the strumming pattern going at the same time. So there's that one. Now the second basic strumming pattern that we're going to go over works the same way as the first one where you can either play a full measure per chord or you can split it between two chords. So with the full measure it's going to sound like this. You're going to do down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, and then switch. Down, up, up, down, up, down, up. And then for the way that's split, you're going to do down, down, and then you're going to switch up, up, down, up, down, up, and then you're going to go to the next chord, A minor, down, down, switch, up, up, down, up, down, up. This is a strumming pattern that I see like in so many songs. Like it's one of the first ones I try out, I think when I'm trying to learn a song or figure out the strumming for something. So it's gonna sound like faster with the full measure. It's going to be like this. And then with the half measure, it's going to sound like this. And now the last basic strumming pattern that I'm going to show you guys is a shorter one. It's one that you can play once per chord or you can play it twice per chord. So it's a little bit different than this one. So if you're just doing it once per chord, it's going to sound like this. Down, down, up, down, up. And you're gonna switch down, down, up, down, up. And so you can either play that once or twice per chord. If you play it twice, that's gonna be a full measure. If you play it once, each chord's gonna be a half measure. So here is going to be the full measure way. So this one is like bouncy, it's like a very happy strumming pattern. A lot of more upbeat songs have something like this. And this is where the rhythm comes in because sometimes if you look at a strumming pattern and you see like down, down, up, up, down, up, you can't really hear it in your head and you're like... If you get too caught up in the like the up and down of it all, at the beginning it is helpful to have the strumming pattern written out so you could remember it, but once you get a feel for the rhythm of it, you won't have to say it over and over in your head anymore. You'll be able to just do it from muscle memory. Another thing that helped me a lot when I was learning is saying the strumming pattern out loud with the rhythm. So you could be like, down, down, up, down, up, down, down. Up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. That like helps me to just kind of like sing it along with the strumming. But yeah, that's why when I go to learn a song and it has the strumming pattern written out, that doesn't really help me a lot. I will go watch a video of someone playing it or I will look up a live performance of somebody playing it. That's what I do for Taylor Swift literally all the time. I go look up her videos of her playing it acoustically live and I see what strumming pattern she's doing and then I try to mimic that. So if it's going to look up covers on YouTube to see how people 
people are playing it like that's really helpful but yeah now we're gonna move on to down strumming which is like my second favorite thing to do now but it's one that takes a lot of patience and practice and timing it's kind of a tough one it's also very tiring if you were trying to down strum for a whole song essentially when I think of down strumming I like to think of it as a series of long and short strums and obviously the word down strumming means you're gonna be strumming down the whole time you're not going to be strumming up when I say long strum I mean you're strumming all the strings and when I say short strum you're going to strum like the top four bass strings and down strumming can also go hand in hand with palm muting which I'm gonna get to after this so I'm just gonna show you guys like my, my favorite way to do down strumming I'll be using L for long and S for short but essentially what I like to do is do long short short long short short long short usually that is like your average like full measure song so I'll do it a little bit faster so you can kind of get the feel this takes a lot of uh, practice with the timing of it so long short short long short short long short because you could do all long down strums but it's hard and it's tiring it kind of gets you off the rhythm a little bit so if you're just like Like that's gonna be tiring when you're just doing the long and short strums together it's gonna sound kind of like this in more fast speed So this technique of strumming takes you practicing it slow and slowly increasing your speed and also increasing the amount of down strums. What I used to tell my students is if you're still working on learning the chords, down strumming is great because you can do as little or as many down strums as you want. So say you're just doing a four chord song and you're a beginner and you need time to switch chords, down strumming is great. You can just do like four down strokes, like one, two, three, four, switch. And if you can't even get that, you could just do two, so. Sometimes when I can't figure out the strumming pattern to a song, down strumming usually always works, so love that. Also, if you're a Taylor Swift fan, All Too Well is down strumming and it's slow and it has four basic chords, so if you want to go learn that song, it's super easy. And now we're going to talk about palm muting, which is something that I talk about in almost every one of my tutorials because I teach a lot of Taylor Swift songs and Taylor Swift loves to use palm muting when she's performing a song acoustically. Now, palm muting is not a strumming pattern but it is a strumming technique and it goes very well with down strumming but you could also be using palm muting literally with any strumming pattern that you have usually it happens on the down strum so what you're gonna do if you have no idea what I'm talking about palm muting you are gonna rest the edge of your hand on the very end of your guitar right here while you strum down on your chord or in your strumming pattern and it's gonna create a muted sound and it just adds a little extra something to your performance or whatever a little bit of variety if you're just playing like a basic strumming pattern or it could also help people distinguish the song that you're playing so it's gonna sound kind of like this so you can still hear the chord if you're too far up you won't be able to hear anything you want to be all the way back right here that way you can hear the sound coming out still and still hear the sound of the chord. The first song that I learned palm muting for was 22 by Taylor Swift, which I just did a tutorial on this song. Basically, the difference between not knowing what song I'm playing to knowing exactly what song I'm playing is palm muting is the difference. So if I was just playing regular, it would be like... The difference is, if you add the palm muting, you're gonna know what song I'm playing. Like, you can totally tell the difference between those. Basically, when you down strum, you're gonna hit it, kinda. So, when you hit the down strum, your edge of your hand is gonna hit that at the same time. And when you go up, it's gonna be open. So you're muting the down strum and then keeping open 
take your hand off on the upstrum. I would say the best way to learn palm muting is to find a song that has it that you really like to play and that will motivate you to kind of stick with it because it can be frustrating at first and also it kind of hurts your finger. The palm muting down strumming, I always manage to pop a blood vessel on my middle finger, which I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do. An easy way to practice palm muting is just by doing down strumming. So you just go to your down strumming pattern and practice your palm muting, keeping this hand here. One thing you don't want to do is like go directly at your guitar with your strum, like, like this. Like you don't want to be like smacking your guitar like this. You want to be going down. I'm hoping this all makes sense to you guys. I'm trying my best to explain it. And I will say this technique took me a while to understand and master, but you can do it. I believe in you guys. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. Send me a DM on Instagram and I'll try to help you out. The last two techniques we're gonna go over is picking and then adding hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now these are just a couple ways how you can kind of level up your strumming and your rhythm playing because sometimes it can just get boring and you're like, I don't want to learn anything too hard, but I want my songs to be distinguishable so that people know what songs I'm playing. And I think if you're a performer that adding hammer-ons and pull-offs and picking can really add to your performance a lot and it can be really impressive for people watching you. I always say I trick people into thinking I'm better at guitar than I actually am because of these reasons. You don't have to be the best at every aspect of guitar in order to be impressive to other people. So what I like to do when I'm adding picking to my songs is do a mix of picking and strumming. One of my favorite ways to add the picking is to do the classic like pick pick strum. Basically you are keeping your strumming pattern but on the down strums you're just gonna pick down instead. So just say you're doing the down down up up down up strumming pattern you can just do a pick pick up up down up. And when you're doing the picking, you're going to pick mostly the bass strings if you're doing that. Say you're playing like a C, you're gonna pick five, four, up, up, down, up. That's just something you can add if you're like, I've been playing this drumming pattern forever, I wanna spice it up a little bit. You can just add the pick, pick, up, up, down, up. And you can do that for any chord. Um, so it's gonna sound kinda like this. That just adds like a whole nother dimension to the song. The second thing I like to do is arpeggio and this is something that I do for certain songs if I, they're quieter or they just loud strumming doesn't quite fit. Basically you're gonna walk down the strings and then back up. So if I'm playing Last Kiss by Taylor Swift, I know I do a lot of Taylor Swift songs, that's just my brand and it's the only things I know off the top of my head. But basically you're gonna go You're gonna pluck the bass two notes and then you're gonna pluck up. So what you're gonna do, for, if you're playing a G, we're just gonna say G. Six, five, four, two, three, four. It's just like a little walk down and then walk back up. And if you're playing a chord that has a different bass string, like a C at nine, you're gonna just start on that bass string. So five, four, three, two, three, four. So that's another thing that I do. I just do a. Those are like the main ways I use picking. Hammer-ons and pull-offs is another one of my favorite ways that sounds so impressive when you're playing guitar, but it's actually not that hard because you're just playing the chords you already know. You're just hammering on and pulling off fingers that you're already using for the chord. So say you're playing like a country song or something, you wanna add a little like twang, you are gonna hammer on your bass string. So for a G, it would be your second finger on the sixth string. On the strum down, you're gonna hammer it on. So for a hammer on, your finger starts off and then once you strum, you're going to hammer it on and you really gotta snap it on there to get the sound. And then if 
you're doing D, you'd hammer on the bass note, which is the uh, this third string here. You'd hammer on your first finger on that third string. And the same thing works for the pull-offs. So you don't have to focus on plucking that string like this. So you just keep with the strumming pattern. The only thing you're doing is moving your first finger on and off the string that it's already on. And another one that I love is you play around with the suspended chords. Suspended chords, I don't really know the music theory meaning behind them. I just know that they sound a little bit more like like they sustain themselves. I maybe, I don't really know. The suspended chords are fun because they build off of normal chords. So this is your regular D. You add your pinky, that's D sus4 right there. So you can do, you can pull it on and off. One of Taylor Swift's favorite hammer-on pull-offs is the G to G sus2. So she just uses her first finger on the fifth string and then moves it down to the third string. So using little chord variations is a good way to mix up your strumming and all of these things can make your songs more distinguishable. People can recognize it more because I would just be playing the same four chords over and I'll be like, guess what I'm playing and everyone's like literally every song that ever exists sounds like that. But if you learn the little techniques to the song, people will know what you're playing and it'll just be more fun. All that to say, the last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with is to just come up with your own strumming patterns, try different things, and that every song has the potential to have a different way of playing it. And once you look at songs that way, you can make it your own. Looking at every song and thinking there's one set strumming pattern is like so limiting. I'm sure songs, they have their like, their known strumming pattern, but that's how people kind of become their own guitar player. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you guys. If you have any more questions, as always, leave them down below. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday, so don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss another video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!